Right. Listen to this. If Michelangelo can put, paint an image of God, the power of that, and then you read a book because Board of Education demands that you do, and he stamps in your mind that image of God, regardless of what I tell you about the Most High and the Supreme Being, I'll, I'll just make it clear to you. So you can see what I'm saying. All right, listen to this. We do this all the time, right? You with me? I want everybody here to say, Jehovah. Jehovah. Good. Very strong. Elohim. Elohim. Good. What picture do you see in your mind of a person or persons when you say Elohim? Don't lie. None. Ready? Michael Jordan. What? Do you see somebody in your mind? You see a human being, don't you? Now, when Michelangelo does the Michael Jordan and we're forced to still do the Elohim, is that what I'm saying? He is now imprinting an image in our mind that regardless of where we are and what we do, we will always reflect back on God as Michelangelo drew it. Why do this here? You see that finger? You see the picture right of the hand where the hands meet? Like I said, that's in my mind. I get this impression now. Watch this. God. You start getting the first thing in an older man. With a voice like this. I am God. That's what um, 20th Century Fox in most of the movie industries have done. They gave God a voice. And he usually has a British accent, even when movies shot in America. If he's going to speak English, he got to speak the Queen's English, because God speak with a dialect. But whether that was thought out, I don't know. But the reality is, God has a voice. God has a hand. His son, see that? God's son, who is that? Would somebody describe Jesus for me, from what you know in your mind? Hey, was anybody here a Christian? All y'all were Christians? Could you describe Jesus who was on your grandmother's wall? Okay, not now, okay. Well, I'm still a Christian. So, for me, could you describe the pictures your grandmother had on the wall? Um, she had, he had like, um, dark brown hair, um, blue eyes, um, pale looking, white robe. Um, he had, like... Was he doing this? Yeah. Was he yeah. doing this? <laughs> Was he doing this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they didn't just give us a face. They also gave us choreography. Right? Yeah, he has certain things he does. And now, when you see the Pope, the Pope knows the choreography. So the Pope goes by and does this. And when he does this, what comes to our mind is we superimpose Jesus Christ over the Pope so we don't look at it, you know, how old and decrepit he's starting to become. We do, you know, and we see in our mind's eye, the image that Michelangelo or whomever. Now, the Jehovah's Witness, if you open their books, like the sister said, they have their own drawing of Jesus. Jesus doesn't have shoulder length hair. In the Jehovah's Witness book, he has a nice haircut. I don't want to get his hair cut, but he got a nice haircut. He has a Midian, it's called a Midian trim according to Torah. When you wear your beard like this, it's like much that. That's a specific beard. It represents a specific culture. It's called a Midian trim as opposed to a the big bear, Jesus wears a Midian trim. So Jesus, according to your witnesses, goes to a barber. Somebody cuts Jesus' hair. Scissors can cut God's hair. You get the drift? God is infallible, but scissors can cut his hair. Did Jesus have to cut his nails in the 33 years he lived? Did Jesus sit down and eat? What's one of the things Jesus ate? What's that? What else? When he got to the upper room, he said, I want some meat. Jesus ate some animals that he created. Jesus had a, a, a lamb, a piece of lamb. Let's say curry, let's say it was He had a curry for that. You see what they've done? First they give you this God to free mean complex, and then they slowly but surely give you what they call anthropomorphism, where they lay things over it, and it loads, slowly but slowly says, God has a hand. God is watching you in God's heart. God spoke through his lips, the face of God, God listened, the hip of God.
Moses saw the back of God as Moses was coming up to Mount Sinai. God was turning the corner. He said, it says in the Bible, he saw the back side of God. God had a, a look. You understand what I'm saying? After they've given us this supreme being thing, then they slowly but surely take it apart in our minds. So we're confused. So if I'm a Baptist, I got a concept of God as a Baptist. The Mormons have a different picture of God. And what the Mormons do while they're putting God up there, they're also putting Joseph Smith. While they're putting God there, they got Joseph Smith holding a book doing his hair too. In their church. And his book is the book of the latter day saints, the Mormon Bible. So they give you the Bible, and then you, and they pull you in with that Bible, and now they're getting you in, they're doing this. And then they who? The Muslims do the same thing. The Muslims lower you with the Quran, and as you come in close, this hadith is coming like this. And when you get there, you are learning, the, the, the Quran goes in the box, and next thing, everything is about hadith this, Sunni this, Muhammad this, Muhammad did this. The importance, sister, of having faces. People say, why do you draw Abraham? I draw everybody who I see. Say, how do I know you see them? You don't, so don't believe me. Right? You don't. Now, Abraham, you get a picture? Isaac, did you get a picture? Moses, did you get a picture? Muhammad, did you get a picture? I'm Michelangelo now, how does it feel? <laughs> you know what I'm how does it feel to do that to people? For you to take it upon yourself to personify God and angels, because there are angels all over the Catholic Church with wings like this. You know, to personify God, give him characteristics, and nobody questions you. And if I do it, you come to me and say, how you know Abraham looked like that? I was say, excuse me, did you go to church and ask them how they know Jesus looked like that? Well, when I do it as a question, everybody knows the Muslims had a fit when I did a picture of Muhammad. They were like, oh my God, the Lord was going to pull him, pull him, pull him. That nigga was bugging. And I was like, so I'm supposed to wait until y'all draw an Arab version of Muhammad, and then I got to teach my son, that's Muhammad. But I'm supposed to wait for you to do that. And no, if I insult you, I'm sorry. No, I ain't doing that. Image is important. It's important for character building. And damn it, if I live in America for 400 years and don't know the images with any good character reflect me, how the hell do you expect my kids to improve? How do you expect them to start feeling good about themselves when all the characters reflected about me is bad? Even Michael Jordan with all the did, there's still this hidden thing about his father's death. Right? Even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, standing basketball for me, with all he did, there's still that thing about the Washington Hamas group that he belonged to, it hell Washington and this. Sammy Davis Jr. had an affair, but they had to destroy his character. You understand? They had to destroy George Washington's character. They had to say, oh, George Washington had wooden teeth, traded slaves for liquor, he was an alcoholic. What's with this crap with destroying characters? You know what it does? It leaves room to place in divinity of my choice. Whoever's controlled. You follow that? Here's some good ones for you. Mickey Mouse. How many people know what Mickey Mouse looks like? If you are under 35 years old, you don't know what Mickey Mouse looks like. You know the new Mickey Mouse. When we was kids, there was a different Mickey Mouse. The one that got Disney World is not Mickey Mouse. That's a new guy. Who knows Betty Boop? Tell me about Popeye. The one they put in the movie, <laughs> Is not the rhythm of Popeye and Olive Oil and Pluto. And who is the one who said, for a burger today, I'd gladly pay you tomorrow? <laughs> Look what they did to Mr. Magoo. They've taken Mr. Magoo from a cartoon character and made him a person. Now, when I say Mr. Magoo, I no longer see the cartoon. When I say Betty Boo, I know when I say Popeye, when I say Batman, when I say Superman, I see Christopher Reeve. And there's something wrong with that. There's something wrong with taking 
the prime order, the, the images of the people that only look like one race of people. That's wrong in a world where there's so much racial tension. That's wrong and it's not even logical because it breeds danger. No, first box had Afros. Because Bart Simpson was invented by a Negro. Did y'all know that? Yeah. And then he was brought up. Why? Why was it necessary to change him? Why didn't he just leave the character? But I miss Michael Jackson. He cut off his nose. Minnie Rippleton. Richard Pryor. Drugs. <laughs> Bill, go ahead. Bill Cosby, his son. Nat King Cole died because he came down south. He had throat cancer. Came out the one of my favorite artists. Came out the hospital because they wanted him to do a show down south. And when he got on the stage, clan members threw bottles at him, knocked him unconscious. He went back in the hospital, and the doctor said, "I get this if you get his state. He could have lived, but he was heartbroken and didn't want to live." Go check the story. He touched a very sensitive one there. He killed himself. That's how hurt he was. Do you know that people down south didn't like Elvis Presley? Did you know that? Elvis Presley was a nigger. He moved too much, they said. Too much hip acting, too much of this stuff. And they did not like him until he was dead. That's another thing. They eulogize you when you're dead. Talk about all the good things you did and how nice you were. When even President Kennedy, after you were dead, Oh, he was having a affair with Marilyn Monroe. He was hanged up with uh, his brother Bobby was involved with the mafia. Marcus Garvey. What did they do to him? Does anybody know what they did to Marcus Garvey? Huh? They murdered him. Why? What's the image? Are you guys, when you have your first child, are you going to put Marcus Garvey's pitch up on the wall and tell people, tell your kids, this is Marcus Garvey, he's a great man? Huh? Are you going to put Alice Selassie up on the wall? Why not? He's the lion of Judah. That's what does. You're Jamaican. You see how we think? You see what I just did? That was it right there. We think all Jamaicans are Rastafarians. All Jamaicans act now as like, that's part of the, I know it's not true. But the bottom line is that's what we believe because that's what's been taught to us. In fact, when we see a black person who says they're Muslim, the first thing that comes to our mind is, are you a black Muslim? Someone knocks on your door on Sunday morning with a suit on and say, no, I ain't just sitting in Jehovah's Witness. No, I'm not a Jehovah's, I'm your uncle. <laughs> what have they done to our minds? You've got to go into why it's important to become Michelangelo in this day and time for everybody to rid this subliminal seduction. I can't. That's the thing I'm telling you. That's what I can't do. That's the sad. I can't erase what Michelangelo did. But I can, I can get there before the, before the Mohammedans do. See, the Mohammedans set out to come to America to convert Americans to Islam. I know, because I'm one of them who came here as an Arab to convert people. You follow what I'm saying? To Islam. And part of that plan, right, was to implant in their mind Arab, out of the Arab side of you. And that would remove the Americanism out of you and make it easy for you not to care about where you're standing when I'm throwing bombs at your ass. All, that's all part of the Arab plan. And that's why they wanted to kill me when I put out a picture of Muhammad. Because they didn't get a chance to put their image in their heads first. I beat them to it. And I said, this is what Muhammad looked like. And I said, Muhammad is not no, he's not a, I said, he's not a what? Nigger, you wanna say? <laughs> but you know what? All over the world, people go to places like South America because someone says there's a statue of Mary crying. And people pack up their bags and run to South America and look and see condensation and fall down and start praying because they feel that God's mother, who, who didn't believe in it, had confined herself to the one statue in this one town, this one village, and they sit out there and have candle and go, oh, Jesus ain't even here. Mary's here, not Jesus. Yeah, they feed him up, and they really believe that something took place there. Now I say, God's up on that thing up there. He waved to me. Y'all, y'all see him wave? You know why y'all see him wave? I'm gonna tell you why. 
Cause y'all don't have them in your heart. See? <laughs> this is the, the game. See, in order for you to have seen him wave, you would have to have been saved. You would have to have had him in you. See, he would have to have been down inside your heart. He would have had to move around you and up inside you. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Lord Jesus. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. So you can't see him. But I, oh, I. I'm in touch with God. You see the game? And we can't get under it beating ourselves up. We got to get from under that crap. God is sitting up there. Hey, he's sitting right up there. That's it. Do you see him? Is he there? Where isn't he? Where isn't God? Then God is up there. And God is here and there and there and there and there and there and there. That's where God is at. So there's no place where God isn't. The people that bother me are the people that are trying to put God someplace. Our Father, who art in heaven. God can't fit inside heaven. God has a throne. God don't have a seat. Well, that's a metaphor toward heaven. God can't be in heaven. God can't be in and be God. <laughs> you understand that? And that's the, that is a subliminal attack on your conscious and your subconscious that makes you misinterpret God as the being that exists. The love force, the harmony, the beauty, the concern, that's God. Now where is God? The question should be, where isn't God? Not where is God, because God can't be any place. God can't be any person. God can't be anything. But God can be. You follow that? And all of us are in God. Now, is God in us? Only if we are in God. Otherwise, to separate them, take a portion of stuff of inside here is putting them in a person, a place, and a thing. That's what they don't want us to grasp. They want to give us the supreme being concept, and when we start to question, they make it his son, so we can have a focal point. And then that son is an image they want to put in our mind, and then that relates to the people that look like the image. And it's all over. You follow? If I come along and say Jesus is black, I'm a racist. That's the wrong thing to say. That's the wrong thing to do. Now let me answer the question. Are these the faces of the real people? Yes. Yes. That's it. Now, when you ask me how can I prove it, I can't. I don't have to. You understand? The burden of proof is on you to bring me their real faces if that's not them. See, I beat you to the punch. <laughs> you follow me saying? I don't have to prove that that's not Abraham. You have to bring me the picture of that Abraham. And then show me, and now then tell me, now I'm going to ask you, no, this is Abraham. <laughs> You're going to say, no, this is Abraham. No, this is Abraham. This is Abraham. This is Abraham. That's what I see. That's what happened with the Mormons, the Jehovah Witness, and the Baptists. They all got a different Jesus. Will the real Jesus please stand up? So all of y'all, you have to get rid of all their images. And the only way to make people get rid of all their images is to come out with images that they don't like to see. See, as long as you're doing it to me, it's cool. But when I do it back to you, how does it feel? You know what I'm saying? When I say, no, Columbus didn't discover America, Rodney did. Who's Rodney? See, Rodney sailed before Columbus. He came from Africa. He sailed around this way. It was Rodney and Umfufu and, and, what? and Mustafa. Yeah, and Mustafa. They, they, they came here first. They were here. They were, when Columbus came, they were the ones that said, how you doing, Columbus? Prove it's not true. 
you understand? The burden of proof. People won't have to, what? What will they have to do? They'll have to start presenting the facts when you put them before us. If you don't ever put anything up there, tell us any damn thing. But when you start saying, prove it, prove Jesus existed, prove it. What have you found out, you Wapians? When you ask people to prove that a man named Jesus existed, give me proof. What have they done? They can't prove it. Say, show me something that the rabbis from any other village, anybody around Jerusalem, anything, anywhere where anybody can prove it. They can't do it. And they get mad at you. Because they never were asked questions like this before. That's what Daniel said in Daniel 7. In the end times, knowledge will become abundant. Said wisdom is going to come out of the mouth of babes. Forget the Pharisees and the reverence of the smart ass. It's going to be the meek that shall dumb found the wise.